<laughs> Captain Renfield here, proving once again that Captain Renfield can do anything that Captain Marvel can do. Bullets? Ha! Watch this. <coughs> oh, that's gonna leave a mark. Uh, back, back to you, Don. Uh, uh, wardrobe! <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. This is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. This is our third part of the Adventures of Captain Marvel in color. This is our second anniversary show, and in between each one of the serial chapters, you'll find different hosts and celebrities from all over the United States. I hope you tune into their shows, and if you do, tell them I sent you. So here we go with the Adventures of Captain Marvel. special effects within the Republic of Serial uh, uh, features. However, however, how did they do it? Well, remember this is before Christopher Reeves, so how do you make a man appear to fly? That's the question. And the answer is actually stranger than actually seeing a man literally fly. No, instead, what they did was they created a seven foot tall, 15 pound paper mache dummy. And then they, of course, attached a, a, a wire to it and they sent it sailing. Uh, 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 of course, uh, uh, more often than not, with a slight slope to it so it would naturally crevasse downwards like so. If they needed the uh, scene uh, to show Captain Marvel taking off, then what they would do is they would actually arrange the dummy backwards, film the poor brute falling, wait the cape so that it would actually be appearing in the proper direction, and then when they got back into the editing booth they would reverse the film, completing the flying. I'm always amazed from these little cinematic magicians can cook up, aren't you? Uh, 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 uh. Well, for this and other fun film facts, check us out at the Cine Tomb, a place where bad films get a second chance to meet their doom. And that's a, of course, that's an official YouTube page. So check us out there, and I'll see.
bang a line. Peter Lang's place. Dr. Lang just drove out with Billy Batson. They took the Mill Valley Road. Mill Valley Road? All right, I'll head him off. Mill Valley Road? In an accident. So I see. Are you hurt? No, but my my companion, he's unconscious. I'll be glad to take him along, too. Our orders were to get Lang, but the Scorpion will be glad to get Batson, too. Take me to. We know where to take you. Get in. What, what, what do you mean? I said get in. Pleasure to see you here. Please be seated. Billy Batson was with him, so I brought him along. Splendid. Where's Batson? Downstairs under guard. He's unconscious. I'll attend to him when I finish with Dr. Lang. What do you want of me? Your lens to help complete the Golden Scorpion Atom Smasher. That's something I, I'll never give you. I think I can change your mind. A barnet, prepare to loosen Dr. Lang's tongue. Where's your lens? In my 
my library. There, there's a painting. Behind the painting, there's, there's a safe. Write down the combination. safe at once. Yes, sir. Wait. Something should be done with Betson. You want me to take care of him? No, that's a pleasure I'm reserving for myself. I'll have him brought up. Oh, oh. What are you going to do with me? Nothing. Until I know your lens is where you say it is. hasn't come to yet. We'll get some water and bring him out of it. Yours isn't going to stop me. But I think it will. Dr. Lang will die if you come one step closer. Malcolm's secretary speaking. Who? Oh, Dr. Lang. Let me talk to Malcolm. Well, Mr. Malcolm's out of town. The Scorpion's men are after my lens. Can I be of any assistance? The safe in your library? Yes, that's right. It's in the alcove behind a painting. The combination is R24. to me. And then back to R11. I'll start at once. I'll bet it. Something I must warn you about. There's a death trap in there. You want the scorpion? Why? Lens in my safe. 
It's a death trap. Save her. gonna be busy inside. Understand? Sure. Lock up the gates and keep out of sight. Shazam! Here's the combination. But he talked about some danger, a matter of life or death, he said. I think I know what he meant. There was a man with a gun as you drove up. Really? Well, where is he? He's been well taken care of. Let's go get that lens. He said it was in the alcove, didn't he? Yes, behind the painting. Read the combination to me. Right, 24. Left, 18. Right, 9. Left, 16. Right, 7. Left, 10. And here's the last number. Right, 11.
Hi, I'm Lilla Stabs, and you can see me in movies like Vampire Call Girls, The Bad Movie Police Series, Cremains, and Mega Scorpions. Check out some of the comic books I've been in, Devil Bitch and Circus Envy. Also, check out some of my art and my shoe designs. And of course, my little bunnies. Now, on to the next chapter in the serial. Hey everybody, this is Johnny Wu here. Um, my website is www.mdifilm.com. I'm here to wish uh, Don a great anniversary for his great show. And now back to the next chapter of the serial. You make the best tea. Thank you. This is Don O'Malley from Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Tune in and stay tuned. Good night, folks. Stay safe. Here's the combination. But he talked about some danger, a matter of life or death, he said. I think I know what he meant. There was a man with a gun as you drove up. Really? Well, where is he? He's been well taken care of. Let's go get that lens. Fix everything just the way you found it. He said it was in the alcove, didn't he? Yes, behind the painting. This is it. Read the combination to me. 
Right, 24. Left, 18. Right, 9. Left, 16. Right, 7. Left, 10. And here's the last number. Right, 11. lens back to the United States. He left it in the tomb. Then we'd better get this map to the Scorpion right away. Get the map and get out of here. I'll take care of the kid. Shazam! Where'd the other man go? I don't know. I didn't see anyone when I came to, but... Never mind him. They were the Scorpion's men, and they know where Dr. Lang's lens is hidden. We gotta get to Mr. Malcolm at once. the map, but the scorpion knows where the lens is hidden. Gentlemen, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. There is but one course open to us. We must get to the Valley of Tombs before the scorpion. Betty! Yes, Mr. Malcolm. Find out when the first steamer leaves for Bangkok, then book passage for all of us. I assume that you all wish to see this thing through? I am honored. Naturally. You can count me in, sir. I'll get Whitey there, too. I'll take care of that immediately. Well, what's to be done with the map, Malcolm? Uh, suppose I take care of it. I thought you were afraid of the curse of the scorpion. We are agreed that the possession of this map will endanger a man's life so long as the scorpion lives. Therefore, I propose this. Each one of us, including Betty, shall have a portion of the map. In this way, I'm sure we shall all reach Siam alive. I've booked passage on the freighter Carfax. It sails for Bangkok at midnight. Splendid. I've divided the map as a precaution against the scorpion. This is your share. Guard it carefully. Yes, Mr. Malcolm. I shall expect you all at the Carfax Pier promptly at 11.30 tonight.
I'll leave for Bangkok on the freight of Colfax at midnight tonight. Carry your orders and ample funds for your needs until I return. Yes, sir. Sit down, Malcolm. This storm's enough to wreck anyone's nerves without you pacing like a caged beast. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm worried. About the storm? No, the scorpion. He may have gone by Clipper. And if he gets to the Valley of Tombs ahead of us, everything we have fought for will be lost. That's not likely. What did the captain say, Billy? We're way off our course. Somewhere near the Siamese coast. He thinks we'll be on the typhoon by morning. It's pretty bad out on deck. Get another lashing on that deck, cargo. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Carlson. Yes, sir. Send another man along. Get along.
some rye. Work this haul line. I'm going to get some firewood. Shazam! Has certainly gone down. Well, anyway, we got everybody off. Say, where's Betty? Oh, I thought she was around here somewhere. Carlson, I thought you got everybody off. I'm sure I had everybody accounted for, sir. I was the last man to leave the ship, and I didn't see anyone. She must still be in her cabin. She might have been knocked out when we struck. Quick, get me back to that ship. Last time you and I spoke, we talked about the flying effects that were used to make Captain Marvel do the flying bit. Little more fun facts about that, yes. From me, oh heavens, never would have guessed. <laughs> the actual pose uh, for the Captain Marvel dummy with the arms outstretched back arch actually stems from uh, the Captain Marvel a Junior comic book strip. So there you are, yeah, yes. Uh, gentlemen, um, 
would then watch the Captain Marvel serial and decide they want to try and mimic the same effects for the um, Adventures of Superman television series. Yes. However, they found it much more cost-effective to do it the way that they did it in, in that picture as opposed to the paper mache bit. However, 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 the black, you know, the the the, the, the grey background with a little bit of a fog machine blown to make it the appearance of clouds and all that part that stayed, but the uh, paper mache bit didn't quite. It, uh, they, they wanted to do it and then they decided it was going to Hindenburg and so they decided to scrap the idea. However, that's not the only connection Captain Marvel has to the Man of Steel. Did you know that? You did? Where? Where? Ah, oh, I'm glad I found you. Yes, yes. I'm going to educate you slightly more than yes. You see, the Captain Marvel costume actually makes an appearance in the George Reeves Superman series. Did you know that? Yes, it's true. He's one of the Kryptonian Siles Council. And if you uh, notice very, uh, very, very slightly uh, obscured Thunderbolt is being by, uh, by an oversized Korma. Yes. However, the Captain Marvel uh, costume then, then appeared in uh, the television series Space Patrol. And it did that for several episodes before they decided that they had better change it up a little bit. And so they got custom made t-shirts that the producers thought fit the tone of the show better. So, where's that for you? Yes, yes. Now, of course, originally, Republic Pictures wanted to do a Superman series, but they couldn't because the rights were still held up by Fletcher Studios and their now famous Superman cartoons. Therefore, Republic Pictures went for the comic book character's biggest rival, Captain Marvel. The original produced script for the uh, Superman serial that never got made uh, was then retrofitted and converted into the mysterious Doctor Satan, which now saying that out loud explains why a cowboy superhero is going up against robots and death rays. So, the more you know. <laughs> well, we had better get back to our cereal. Hopefully, not already in progress. <laughs> Mr. Deville, roll em. Hi, kids. Hack from Hack's Horror Show. And I just want to say happy anniversary to Don. Congratulations. And check out Hacks Horror Show on Vimeo, Roku, and on the Sci TV. And now, back to another chapter in this series.
bomb has certainly gone down. Say, where's Betty? Well, I thought she was around here somewhere. Carson, I thought you got everybody off. I'm sure I had everybody accounted for, sir. She must still be in her cabin. She might have been knocked out when we struck. Quick, get me back to that ship. Swimming ashore. Come on. So you went to your cabin, Betty. Then what happened? I was looking for some important papers when someone struck me from behind. Have you any idea who it was? No. Well, why would anyone want to kill you? He must have been after my section of the map. He took my handbag. Was the map in the bag? No, it's in a waterproof envelope pinned inside my jacket. Oh, that was smart. Say, hey, how do we get away from here? Kandapur. The native village is just across the hills. We can reach there in a few hours. Good. Let's get started. I suggest we rest up for a couple of days and start for the Valley of Tombs day after tomorrow. I think that's a sensible idea. Suits me. Oh, Billy. Yes, sir? You and Whitey see what you can round up on the way of cars and equipment. Yes, sir. Come on, laughing boy. Some days you don't even pay to get up. From our master, the Scorpion. White infidels plan to enter the sacred valley the day after tomorrow. He will give you the signal to attack. But our men are few. They will be reluctant to face the guns of these foreigners. There will be no danger. I shall prepare a trap which will wipe them out before they can fire a shot. Contact you immediately upon our return to America. Yours truly. Well, Billy, what luck? A lot better than I expected. I found two cars and all the equipment we need. We can get started right away. But we hadn't planned to leave until tomorrow. Why, of course not. I don't see how we can go on such short notice. Are you sure the equipment is adequate? 
And that the cars are in good order? Well, certainly. I checked everything. It's early yet, and there's no use wasting any more time here. I'd like to get started and get it over with. We can get there before dark, can't we? Why, uh, yes. I suppose we can. Sure we can, easily. Come on, let's go. Come on, cut it out, will you, Billy? <laughs> Shazam! Why were you sending that signal? Come on, talk or please, I'll... Please, please. I'll talk. The signal was to let my people know that the Malcolm expedition has entered the pass. Are they going to attack them? No. They have blocked the road in the canyon. They will blow up the mountainside and bury them under a landslide. What? <laughs> Infidels are driving through the pass. They were not expected until tomorrow. No matter. We are ready for them. Finish laying the fuse. Was that the scorpion to give us a signal for the attack? So his message said that he may not have the opportunity now. Our orders are clear. We must destroy the white men before they enter the valley. are in our hands. Let's try to push this thing out of the way. No, it's no use. We'll have to chop it up. Well, there are axes in the car. Come on, let's get them.
certainly saved our lives that time. Yes, but who planned that trap for us? Must have been the natives. Step on it, Whitey. We won't be safe until we're out of this pass. The infidels have reached the Valley of the Tombs. I will again dishonor our ancient gods. Let us ride down and attack them. They are well armed, and we are too few. We must think of a way to arouse all the tribes against them. Only the volcano would speak. Its eruption has always been a signal for our men to assemble. But the volcano is sleeping. We will wake it up by diverting the river into it as ancient warriors once did. Come. Join the pieces of our map and see where he hit the land. Why, it looks like one of the slabs inside the tomb. Good. Let's go and get the lens. I'll not be a party to invasion of the sacred tomb. Nothing but disaster can come of it. I think I'll stay outside and keep an eye on the cars. That's a good idea, Billy. Whitey, get us some torches and bring us some tools. is blocked. Now the water will flow into the volcano craters. This is the place, all right. Yes, but we'll have to pry off the slab. Well, that won't be difficult. You brought your tools? Yes, sir. Scorpio is angry because unbelievers have entered the tomb. When the volcano is erupting, the walls may fall down on us. Somebody can give me a hand with this quick. Take care of this. It's an earthquake. They'll be caught in the tomb. Wait. Come on, let's get out of here before this joint falls apart.
Good evening, my victims. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Malvolia, the queen of screams. You can check me out, if you have the guts, on my YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash C backslash Malvolia, the queen of screams, or follow me on all the socials at Queen Malvolia, if you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary show, Dawn. I, Dr. Frederick Palance Barrymore, am about to embark upon a most controversial and somewhat dangerous experiment involving an exchange of the condition of our basic natures. Even as a child, I was intrigued and obsessed with the transformation of one stage of being into another. After an endless series of trial and error, I finally found the definitive answer to my laborious endeavors, the actual mental and physical metamorphosis of the human being and his soul. Unfortunately, a grand poo-poo happened. And now I cannot transfer myself back to Dr. Barrymore. But I find I am trapped inside this creature-like being known as Ikoro. 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 And now back to the next chapter in Dawn's serial show. And don't forget to subscribe to The Agoro Show on YouTube. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Hello, this is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Serial Show. Thanks for tuning in to my second anniversary show. Cut. Cut? Cut? Why? You got too many videos. Okay, I'm with the cereal. Thanks. My own special. I'm not even in my own special. The is black. Now the water will flow into the volcano craters. Scorpio is angry because unbelievers have entered the tomb. The volcano is erupting. The walls may fall down on us. Somebody can give me a hand with this quick. Here it is. Why, yes. See? Why, it's the same as mine. I'll take care of this. What's an earthquake? They'll be caught in the tomb. 
Wait. Come on, let's get out of here before this joint falls apart. With your people, Tal Shitali, you must be able to make them understand. I can try. Well, tell them anything. Stall them till I get the others away from here. I'll do my best. Shazam! That's the way out, but only for one of us. You? The scorpion? Yes. No one else shall ever know. No. No, please don't. No one will ever know. I won't tell. I won't tell. <laughs> Volcano has spoken. It orders death to every white infidel who has entered the sacred tomb of the Shaga Tao. How do you know that this is the wish of the scorpion? All men of the tribes know that the volcano speaks for him. Perhaps. But it is also known that the volcano will erupt if water is turned into it. Is it not possible that some evildoer may have caused this eruption to serve his own ends? Al Chitali has spoken with a voice to wisdom. We are not savages who kill without reason. We only act if it is the will of the scorpion. He surely will send us a further message if it is his desire. Until then, let us wait. You have not long to wait. I am your leader, and I come here to command. The white men must be destroyed. Wait! Wait! This man is not the scorpion. He's a false prophet hiding behind the sacred mask. I'll show you! Seize him. Chain them and guard them carefully. They shall soon know the power of the scorpion. The scorpion has triumphed, and all the white infidels shall be sacrificed to celebrate the victory. Even the mighty Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel? Is he still alive? <laughs> 
Yes. But we need fear him no longer. For he is only Billy Batson. Batson? But how is that possible? Perhaps it's a powerful drug or some other device which Batson uses to transform himself to Captain Marvel. And if Batson is destroyed, Captain Marvel will cease to exist. True. But first, I must learn the secret of his transformation. You must capture him and the others and bring them here alive. But you must be extremely careful and prevent Batson from changing to Captain Marvel. It shall be done, Master. How you feeling? I feel better, thanks. Good. Now, you gotta get moving, because I don't know how much longer Tal Chitali can stall the natives. I'm going back in the tomb, look for Bentley and Malcolm, and I'll join you as soon as I find them. But, Billy, you can... Now, listen, go ahead, Whitey. There's no time to argue. that. The symbol of your ancient faith is finally restored. These are the last of the lenses. <laughs> Thus is the power of the scorpion renewed to destroy all its enemies and traitors. You have seen the ability of this machine to smash atoms and transmute metals. You will now see what it does to a human body. Jadpur, Shala. method of execution, Miss Wallace. You are next. can save her. 
I've learned of your ability to change yourself into Captain Marvel. Tell me the secret, and Miss Wallace goes free. Well? Untie his hands. Are you ready to tell me? Yeah. I'll not only tell you how, I'll show you how it's done. Shazam! Now, I'll give a demonstration. I'm going to show you how you've been misled by an imposter. Bentley. Justice will be done to him. He committed many crimes in his own country, and he'll be returned there for punishment. One move from any of you, and she dies. Scorpion is a symbol of power that could have helped to build a world beyond man's greatest hopes. A world of freedom, equality, and justice for all men. But in the greedy hands of men like Bentley, it would have become a symbol of death and destruction. Then until such time when there's a better understanding among men, may the fiery lava of Scorpio Burn the memory of this from their minds. What happened? Who spoke? I can explain it, Billy. As Captain Marvel, you were the protector of the Scorpion. Now that it's destroyed, your protection is no longer needed. And the power of Captain Marvel is at an end. And you, my countrymen, understand now that these people, those strangers, are our friends. And that Billy Batson has done you a great service by delivering you from the hands of a man who is not only your enemy, but the enemy of all mankind. Even though you return to your own land, you shall ever remain with us in our hearts. Gee, that means we can go home? It sure does, Whitey. And let's get started. <laughs> I'm Scarlet. Welcome to the Mansion of Mystery. Hey, Mom. When you go back to the past, can you give us more cereal? And this is my son and co-host, CJ. You can find us monthly on the Vortex, www.horrorhost.net, as well as several small stations across the country, including our home base, WBXZ 56.4 Throwback Television in Buffalo, New York, and WHNE 3.6 The Drive-In Channel in Detroit, Michigan. 
You can also find us on Twitter at MOM Official Page and on Facebook. Well, I think I'm going to have myself a nice bowl of cereal. And speaking of cereals, congratulations to Don's Breakfast Cereals for two years of episodes from everyone here at the mansion. And now let's get back to the next exciting chapter of this cereal. on the road! <laughs> I'm here in your car. It's here on the nightish trip. Oh la la! That must be one big nightish trip. <laughs> see you as being made of uranium and iodine because all I can see is you and I together <laughs> <laughs> Extinct for 
millions and millions of years. Lepidod? Listen, Nerdburger, start making sense. Where are you? Where am I? to you. They've been extinct for 300,000 years. <laughs> I chew the thing. Otherwise, no more snooky wooky from me, you brainiac Poindexter! Oh! <laughs> My love. Oh, Bambi. You know that you are my electromagnetic radiation of the spectrum of love. But uh, I'm unable to comply. You must have broken the space-time continuum with your fast driving. I need to pinpoint your exact location. Can you send more pics? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> one showing a bit of cleavage would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> Je te pète à la figure. You're in danger. 
You're just jealous, Darwin. Because they know how to treat me. Oh, they know what makes that little face float. They know I am not a cheese eating surrender monkey. They treat me. I'm good as I am. Keep licking my food. <laughs> Worship their goddesses by ripping the beating hearts from their chests while I died in agony. <gasps> oh, Bambi. Are you there? Bambi? 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 Are you there, Bambi? <laughs> Bambi? Bambi? I am your goddess. Company at your service. Well, I didn't expect three of you. It's just a tiny little buzzer that doesn't work. It's very simple. Oh, well, that makes us even. So are we. <laughs> You've heard the old saying, many hands make light work. So you just buzz off and we'll have your buzzer buzzing in a jiffy. And a quick jiffy, too. Well, all right. I'll be in my office. You call me if you need me. Yes, ma'am. Let's go. Uh, pardon me, miss. Please, please. We have work to do, work to do. There we are. See here. Uh, wire goes right through the wall here. I'll take it on the other side. Pardon me. Where are you going? I'm, I've got work to do. Good. 
you'll have to admit that's using your head. Don't we always? Well, youngsters, I think you ought to watch, because I got a headache. Hold it. Stop right there. What the devil are you doing? Bouncing around your garden. I just love bouncing around these blooming gardens. And you're just ruining my begonias. How about that? I thought they were petonias. Hmm. Hello, County Zoo. May I help you? Listen, you. There's a kangaroo bouncing around in my garden. Come and get him right away. Yes, ma'am. We'll jump right over. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, which one of you thimble brains let the kangaroo out? Not me. Curly's supposed to watch him. What's the kangaroo? Uh oh, company. There he is, tiptoeing through the tulips. Get your nets, boys, and spread out. We'll corner him in the begonia. That's funny. Here comes our little buckaroo now. Well, I can see the nets aren't going to work. That Australian hedgehopper is bouncing curly all over the gladiolas. Yeah. I feel like a jumping bean. You mean jumping human bean. What? Now there are two of them trouncing all over my prize chrysanthemums. Well, I'll just have to take care of them myself. I just can't stop bouncing. Those two fumbling baboons don't need my help. I'll just take a little siesta. No sense looking for trouble. I just found a swell way to lick insomnia. Get an elephant to stomp on you. Here comes Hippity Hop. I'll have to use my famous old football tackle. Yeah! <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't know you were a lady. I gathered that, you masher. As any idiot could tell you, the only way to catch a kangaroo is to dig a deep hole. Ouch! Sorry. I won't make the same mistake twice. You can bet on that. Yeah! Ouch! Wait a minute, Curly. Here he comes. I'll get him this time. Gotcha, knucklehead. So long, lady. Sorry about the gladiolas. And your begonias. Oh, yeah? I'll fix you monkeys for ruining my garden. Well, let's get out of here. Yeah, I'm Greetings, I'm the Count Gore Devold, the host of Creature Feature, the weekly web program at CountGore.com. And this is Don O'Malley from Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. And I'm here to congratulate Don on the second anniversary of his show that brings you all those exciting, action-packed, cliffhanger film cereals that we all know and love. So congratulations, Don, when it comes to cereals, you're a real killer! <laughs> Hey, 
three knuckleheads. Go get the gear. What? The gear, the gear. Gear, gear. Oh, gear, coming up, coming up, coming up. Hey, Mo, what do you think I can do? I don't think you can do anything. But as far as I'm concerned, you can... Here it is, Mo. Is that the one you want? Huh? No, you landlocked landlubber, you. If I was geared right, I'd give you right on the... It's the gear on the pier. The gear on the pier. I hear, I hear. It rhymes. I'm a poet. <laughs> Henry Wadsway Fatfellow. Yeah, Get it going! All right, all right. This is where it belongs, if you know where it belongs. Yeah, I know where it belongs. Get out of here. Fishing? Yeah, you're right. We better buy some. Yeah, buy some. Hey, ship ahoy! Hey. I want a couple of fish! Yeah. Can you spare some more? Oh, yeah, That's a pretty good Thanks, fellow. I'll see you sometime. Yeah. Now, folks, it's gonna take us some time to get out of this. Why don't you just sit back and enjoy the cartoon? Yeah, well, we gave you a little bit. <laughs> get a hook now, we'll use it for bait. to navigation, eh? You want to ship all of them to dry dock and take them apart for salvage. Aye, aye, sir. All right, now hear this, you clanhead. What's our position? I'm standing up, sir. I'm steering, sir. I know that. I'm going to ask another stupid question. How did you blubberheads ever get into the Coast Guard? The Coast Guard is just lucky, I guess. Don't be funny. Now heave to. Full speed ahead. All engines behind and swap that deck. Aye, aye, sir. Now hear this. Your leave for every man in the crew. Go, go, go. Aha! Uh -huh. A load at last. 46 years in the Navy, and I finally have my very own ship. The biggest ship in the world, and the noisiest crew in the world, too. P-19, there's our target, men. It looks brand new. You sure this is the right one? Read the name, Chowderhead, SS Menace. Yeah, the chief said it was a menace to navigation. Oh, boy, we get to wreck that whole big ship. From stern to bow, we'll start right now. Stow the poetry, you swabbies, and get the crane. Okay, hook on. Hook on. A toast to the Yemeth Menace and her gallant captain, me. Okay, Larry, take her away. Right. Boy, that may be coffee is strong. Unhook claw. Claw unhook. All right, Buzz Brain, start the saw. So started. Cut away. There she goes. Not bad. Good ball cut. Now get the stern. Aye, aye, sir. Every new ship takes a little getting used to. So, oh, well, I'll just ignore the noise. All right, Larry, let's see you skin this turkey. Aye, aye, sir. Ooh, it's getting drafty. Okay, man, stand by to blast the quarter deck. Aye, aye, sir. One blasted quarter deck coming up. Anyway, Torpedo, man your battle station. All hands on deck. We've been hit. Just pull off the hardware, Larry, and we'll head for home port. Right, and another job well done. Stand by the fire. Oops, I forgot. The crew's gone. Oh, I'll fight the blooming beggars myself. What sneaky little devils they are. Hey, look, this is the last thing left on the ship. A loudspeaker. Well, hear this. This is the captain speaking. The captain? When I get through with you barnacle heads, you'll be hanging from the highest yard arm in the San Fernando Valley shipyard. 
Sounds like we made a little mistake. I'll meet you guys at Newport Beach. Come on. Get out of my way. I don't have to get out of my way. I don't have to get out of my way. I don't have to get out of what happened here? What happened here? Well, we'll go out again tomorrow. Maybe we'll have better luck next time. I sure hope so. I love boats and the store there. And I love the sea, and the sea loves me. See? Yeah, you love the sea? Oh, the sea man. Loves you. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. go ahead. Oh. The sea loves them. Yeah, hey, I better like the sea myself. See? I'll <laughs> see you later. Why, you. The car's not insured. Okay. You work. <laughs> How do you like that? It's flat. It's almost a new tire. Hmm. Well, Mo, it could be worse. Yeah, it's only flat. Oh, on... I know, I know. It's only flat on the bottom. <laughs> you know any more funnies you'd like to make? Go get a spare. We haven't got it. This is the only car we got. We'd never carry a spare car, Mo. A spare tire, you lame brain. Tire. Oh, you mean the one on the back with the two holes in it? That's the one with the two... <laughs> you mean you didn't have the spare tire fixed when I told you to? I slipped up. Remind me to decimate you later. Okay, I'll make a note of it. Yeah, now we have to go into town and get the thing fixed. Yeah. How do you like that? What? We'd better hitchhike. Hitchhike? I know how to do it. I saw him do it in the movies one time. I saw it, I saw it in the movie where, the, where, where they stood right there on the road like that. Anyway. <laughs> I guess we'll have to fix it ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Hey, yeah. huh? Get working on that rim over there. Yeah, get on the rim there. All right. Yeah. Useless, get out of the yeah. way. I'll watch you. I'll see you ready? So I'll know how to do it. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. I don't understand you. Oh. You know, this reminds me of the last time we needed help, and you know what happened then. I sure do. Yeah, boy, do I remember. Hmm. Take a chance on you. I have never seen you clumsy before, but those wash rags say car washers to me. You won't be sorry, Chief. Yeah, we're professional washers. My last job was a complete washout. Then get busy. Let's see you put my new frenzy through. She cost me 10,000 bucks, including radio and heater. Right, boss. Come on, you meathead. I hate a pushy foreman. Thank you, all set. All set here. Washers ready? Ready here. Oh, boy, here goes nothing. There you go, boss. Slick as a whistle. Hmm, not bad. Okay, the job's yours. 
Thanks, boss. We did it, Mo. We're in. The job's ours. Well, don't just stand there, you lunkheads. Grab some brooms and get busy. And for Pete's sake, watch those hooks. Quick, another customer. Put them through. I'll collect the money at this end. But what if the car falls apart again? Let me worry about that. Get busy. Hmm, no wonder. This rear stat is low. It should be at high. This job's a cinch. Uh-oh, criminy. It's taking everything. Now to clean the tire. Cheap rubber. Uh-oh. That doesn't look right. Better up it a bit more. This should do it. That's strange. I can hardly hold this vacuum. Now we. It's coming apart. No wonder. Just look at the way these wires are jammed in here. Uh-oh. Mad vacuum. Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Oops. Did you bring the cards? Hey! Oh! Yowie, what a mess. we better stop and start all over. Now, just keep calm, folks. There'll be a slight delay while we put this junk together. Yeah. Anybody got a screwdriver? Or a wrench. That's right, operator. I want my lawyer. Ah! Jeepers, the boss. Ah! Relax, boss. We can handle this little emergency. Swell, but first let's see you handle this. Run for the hills, guys. We're all washed up here. Boy, what a sorehead. Yeah, the least little thing and he blows up. Hey, the chatter and step on it. She's all fixed. All right, let's go. Uh, Mo, you remember when you told me to have the tire fixed? Yes. And you told me to get gas, too? Yes. I just remembered. I forgot the gas. Why, oh, you jughead, do you realize we're 40 miles from a gasoline station? So I'm stupid. So what? I'll say you're stupid. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. This is Donald Bailey with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thanks for tuning in to my second anniversary show. I want to sincerely thank all the uh, hosts that have, from all over the United States that have sent something in for my show. And, oh, thank you.